How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about a new Christmas horror movie. This is Christmas, Bloody Christmas. Uh, this is from December 9th, 2022, and is a Shudder movie that's also getting a theatrical release, which I really do like. Stuff that would normally only be seen on streaming actually getting a big screen release. Um, not the widest release ever, but I was lucky enough where one of the theaters near me was actually showing it, so I got to see this one on the big screen. Uh, this is written and directed, and I believe also produced, by Joe Bagos, who previously did this movie VFW, and VFW was a really fun, grungy throwback, kind of an ode to Assault on Precinct 13, so I knew that I wanted to see what he was going to come up with next. Uh, this movie stars Riley Dandy, who I believe had been in other more traditional style Christmas movies. Uh, we also got Sam Delrich and Jonah Ray. And this movie, uh, a brief look at the plot, no major spoilers or anything. Uh, you get this girl... She's the boss. She owns a media store, you know, used records and movies and VHS tapes and, and stuff like that. And there's this guy who's her employee. And the two really do have a good coarse banter with each other. You know, they're drinking buddies and they'll argue about music and they'll argue about movies and they'll get mad at each other, but not in like a real serious way. They'll be like, F you, why, why do you think that? But you can tell it's joking and that, you know, it's, it's their rapport, you know? And there's also a striking amount of romantic tension between the two, but that's been kind of, you know, pushed aside for a long, long time. Now, anyway, they go to see their friends who work at a toy store, share a few drinks before the night is over, and in that friend's toy store they see their new animatronic Santa, a big state-of-the-art thing designed by a military company. And after they leave, that Santa is going to awaken and go on a murder spree. And yeah, yeah, it, it's quite insane. It's almost sort of like, um, did you like Terrifier but wish it was a Christmas movie? It is just insane random carnage and and I do want to emphasize that I also want to say what this movie is not that I thought it might be is yeah it's a robot Santa but it's not so much like hey did that Santa just move like I was expecting it to be much more of like the robot Santa hiding that he's really alive you know I thought it would be much more just in the toy store did Santa move? I don't know, but it really isn't that. You know, just a little bit at the beginning, you know, so it's it's not that, and there's no real, you know, you expect there to be like some message tied to it. You know, he's a robot Santa, so maybe it's commercialism like Child's Play or something. But no, the whole robot Santa thing is really just a setup to do what's essentially the Terminator holiday special. So yeah, it's basically... Um, they, at the beginning of the movie, will do some fake commercials, you know, for that kind of set the tone for this world. So one of them is like an alcohol that they say, share it with the whole family, and they even show the kids there, you know. So that shows this kind of grungy world. And then one of the ads is like, hey, this military company is also making a robot Santa now. And that's pretty much just them dropping it and saying, that's what it is, don't worry about it, because it is kind of striking, you know, that it doesn't play up. I mean, it's more about what happens than why it happens, and it's kind of odd that there's not more of the why, but it's almost like, you know, <laughs> like in a video game where you're like, what will happen if I drop in an evil robot Santa here? Oh, he's going nuts and killing people. That's what I thought would happen. Uh, but yeah, so it's not much of that, and just definitely go in expecting the, the carnage, and this movie overall has a pretty good atmosphere, you know, 
some of the shots really do look like something that was drawn on black paper, you know? It's really, really dark, and then what you do see is specific lighting, usually from colored lights. Again, going for that Christmas light feel. So it's really dark, and then splashes of red or green, some blue sometimes, you know? Christmas lights and neon lights, Christmas in the grungy city, and tons and tons of snow. And yeah, maybe too much snow, but tons of snow. And to the point where sometimes, yeah, it can be too dark or too snowy. And there's a few shots that I'm like, what was that shot? <laughs> kind of reminded me of the original 30 Days of Night comic. It, the snow in there would be really intense in some panels. You're like, what is that? Uh, but yeah, really a good atmosphere and also a ton of film grain. Actually, kind of odd that this movie set in the present. Uh, the film grain and so much of the attitude and the special effects, it's a throwback to the movies of the 70s and 80s, so it is kind of odd that it's set in the present, but a very, very grungy movie with some good kills. And with the, uh, with the whores and with the kills, I do want to emphasize two things, bloody and practical. And yeah, practical does mean that sometimes people will turn into mannequins, but I find that when stuff like that happens, it's more funny and charming versus relatively soulless CGI that we get in another in a bunch of other low-budget movies. So yeah, if you want to see them build a fake head and then smash it and get blood everywhere, they know what audience they're making this movie for, and they're striving to do as good as they can in there. And a lot of this movie really does remind me of, like, the final rampage scenes from Silent Night, Deadly Night, where he's going through people's houses or through the toy store especially. But this is more ground uh, turned up to an 11, you know? Silent Night, Deadly Night, great kills, really, really good movie. Uh, but that had more talking about the morality behind punishment. Santa judges you. What if this guy judged you? And there's none of none of that here. I mean, maybe there is some deeper meaning, but the film isn't really plot heavy, and it really isn't thinking about deeper things. It's going, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we did this, and trying to give us as much as they can. And, you know, I see a lot of times, you know, with slasher movies, how do we keep the energy going as long as we can? And I've seen other stuff like Laid to Rest, which they tried to do a more long-form slasher, and it worked okay, but this is, is a lot better. Really grungy, really over-the-top, really a ton of how can we keep this insanity going as long as possible and yeah I, I won't spoil it but towards the end it does drag out a little bit too long because they are trying to get the most possible bang for their buck uh, but yeah it's still a really fun finale and also with the characters um, the characters do feel real and believable you know with the romantic tension and the arguing about things they, they talk a whole bunch about music the store sells used vinyl and some of this is them arguing about really deep cut music and different versions of the songs. But also, quite funnily, you know, these are people who are into hard rock and they start talking about Christmas music and really analyzing it and going, okay, I don't like a lot of Christmas music, it's too bright and cheery, but this song really did resonate with me. In, in this version of that classic song, I felt really had something there. So they are talking really real and honestly. And they also a ton of references to horror movies. And, you know, you do things like put up a bunch of posters all over the wall. And, you know, they go in the used media store, all the VHSs, and a ton of Vinegar Syndrome Blu-rays, which I really wish, because I have a ton of Vinegar Syndrome Blu-rays as well, I really wish they held on the movies long enough, because I was trying to see, like, what was that movie, huh? But it all did feel real, and, you know, sometimes this can be too on the nose, sometimes this can be too much of winking at the audience in other movies, but 
in this movie, it felt very natural. It felt like they were fans of the stuff and they were arguing about it and saying, oh no, that one sucked and this one's underrated. Later on, they started talking about like horror movie sequels and the girl really goes to bat for Pet Cemetery 2. It's super underrated. More people need to watch it. And she also talks about like, Blair Witch 2, Book of Shadows, you know, and, you know, to the point where it's getting me thinking about this stuff and, and wishing I could talk to the characters in the movie, because Book of Shadows is more like, it had the potential to be a really good movie and the studio messed with it, and I think there's a good director's cut there, but I can't talk to the girl in the movie because I'm, I'm, I'm just watching it, you know, and also, when you talk about underrated sequels, you need to mention Amityville too, right? Or did they and I just... I'm like, maybe I just missed it, because that is an obvious pull. But... N n no more... <laughs> no more talking about this. Back, back to the movie. Uh, but overall, this is a movie made for a very specific audience, you know? And you do low-budget movies, you can do that, you know? It's not something that we have to make a hundred million dollars or so to break even. It's saying, hey, there are people in the world that miss the 70s and 80s filmmaking. They miss the grunge. They think about movies and music in this way. And they want to see Santa going on a evil rampage, you know? Take the concept from Futurama and just make it violent, you know? And they, they did that right. Gore kills cool lighting. And I can't believe I haven't even talked about how intense the music can be in this. So yeah, it's not going to be for everyone. It's going to be for the people that want that intensity. But if you want that intensity, you're going to love it. If you don't want that, you might walk out of the theater going, what did I just watch? But yeah, this is the kind of movie that uh, would make a film professor very upset probably and in turn, that means I think it's doing something right. Uh, but overall, for the right crowd, if you see the trailer and you think that looks awesome, uh, you'll probably like this as well. So, for the right crowd, knowing that this is for a very specific market, I can definitely recommend it if you're into that stuff. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You're really helping the channel out. I'll put my Christmas playlist on the bottom. Uh, I talked about a bunch of other Christmas movies. In particular, I did talk about all the Silent Night, Deadly Night movies. So you can find those there as well. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Christmas playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.